That's Sam. And this is the very second her family learns that she got into a top 10 medical school. And none of this is luck. She didn't accidentally trip and fall into a white coat. Every single word from her application was engineered. And I'll prove it to you. She didn't come from your traditional Ivy League powerhouse. She's from a small liberal arts college with limited extracurricular opportunities. Hell, she has 15 hours of shadowing. And yet, here's an interview at Drexel, UMass, Rush, Kaiser, UCLA. They keep coming in all across the country. And what makes it more interesting is that her reasons for success aren't obvious. In fact, one of her most meaningful extracurriculars is protein kinematic research. Super broad, super abstract, and honestly, kind of generic. I mean, yes, she does have a 4.0 GPA and a 508 MCAT. Those are great stats, but how does that translate to a top 10 in medical school acceptance? What are we missing? What could Sam possibly have done to catch the eyes of some of the best medical schools in the country? Well, I worked with Sam for nine months, and it shouldn't surprise you that getting into a top 10 med school, well, that application had to have been better than it seems. In fact, I think we've discovered a new blueprint on how to stand out to your dream medical school. We'll talk about the three-step system we use to beat the medical school admissions game. When I first met Sam, she started literally at zero. Biggest challenge, I think just understanding the application itself. I've done some research about it, but then going through it, it was even bigger than I thought. And I don't I don't think anybody really prepares you for that. And then and also like with all the added pressure of like um was it my MCAT not being on on time as I wanted to. So that whole whole process in and of itself was really stressful. There's the breakthrough hiding in plain sight. I don't think anybody really prepares you for that. This brings us to secret number one understand the game. No matter what you read online, there is nothing that prepares you for this. Look at the timestamps. In only two hours, our pre-med received 16 secondaries. And the second you get it, those med schools are expecting quality writing back as soon as possible, preferably within two weeks. And if that program is a priority for you, then within two days. And honestly, it's impossible to get all these secondaries back on that timeline if this is the first time you're seeing them. Here's Sam's final secondary document. 146 pages, 63,000 words. So at Premed Catalyst, we finish our primaries in April, May, long before the AMCAS even opens. And we complete those core seven secondaries, which are secondary prompts that nearly every medical school asks weeks before we even get that first email. And that's only because we know how the game is played. You know what else isn't normal about this admissions game? You've built this pre-med application over years, pouring your heart and soul into grades, extracurriculars, and huge standardized exams. You've written hundreds of thousands of words over nine months to finally submit an AMCAS application that lands on an adcom's desk. And here's Dean White, the assistant dean of Johns Hopkins, to tell you exactly what they do with your application. But it gradually will drop to about 10 to 15 minutes because they start to, to focusing on, on some key elements. You know. 10 minutes. That's how long most adcoms spend screening your application. And that truth forces us to change our strategy on how we write. This brings us to secret number two, scanned, not read. We'll get there next, but understanding the game separates the pre-meds who become doctors from those who don't. But how would you understand a game you've never played? You absolutely wouldn't. That's why there's nothing more important than seeing real actual applications that have gone into real actual medical schools. We have eight full AMCAS applications that got into some of the best medical schools in the country. And over 18,200 pre-meds are part of our community. Click the application database link in the description box below now to join. So how can a pre-med stand out if an adcom spends only 10 minutes on their entire application? Well, there are two writing hacks that we implement with all of our students. I want you to read this piece. It's written in the 15th grade, closer to Harvard Law. Now, I want you to read this one. It's closer to the eighth grade, more like Harry Potter. And we teach all of our students this writing hack number one. Harry Potter, not Harvard Law. Clear, not clever. 
and that makes writing so much more scannable. Now, even if your writing is in that eighth grade level, there is one thing you must ensure does not happen. The adcom cannot stop reading because once they do, oh, maybe their phone rang or their office door creaked open, that's it. They lose their place, they skip on forward in the application and whatever point you were trying to make gets lost in the digital ether. And this brings us to hack number two. Here's Sam's personal statement. What do you notice? medium sentences, short, snappy ones. And when there's a point to linger on, the sentences are longer, heavier, and have weight. I'll read this piece with you, and I want you to pay attention to the changes in rhythm. Five word sentences are fine, but several together become monotonous. Listen to what is happening. The writing is getting boring. The sound of it drones. It's like a stuck record. The ear demands some variety. Now listen, I vary the sentence length and I create music. Music. The writing sings. It has a pleasant rhythm, a lilt, a harmony. I use short sentences and I use sentences of medium length. And sometimes when I am certain the reader is rested, I will engage him with a sentence of considerable length, a sentence that burns with energy and builds with all the impetus of a crescendo, the roll of the drums, the crash of the cymbals, sounds that say, listen to this, it is important. That's how you force your ad comps to not stop. With hack number two, write music not words. Still, there's a catch. Even if you understand the game and your application is scannable, that doesn't guarantee that the content of your application is good enough to earn a white coat. So next, we'll answer what makes an application strong enough and how can we optimize our application to feature our strengths? And if you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, you do not want to make the wrong decisions. Our pre-med catalyst students that submit their applications on time have a 100% acceptance rate. That is double the national average. And our results are only because we work so closely with students. In fact, we can only take on four students per month until we're full for the cycle. If you'd be interested in getting into some of the strongest programs in the country, click the application cycle advising link down below to book a free strategy call before we're full. And that brings us to the final piece of the puzzle, the content of your application. Now I want you to pretend that you're the adcom. Here's a couple of seconds to scan through each of Sam's nine most important extracurriculars. I'll do it with you. Oncoplastic surgeon shadowing, 15 hours. Clinical research coordinator, 2000 hours. Medical device, ICU delirium. Clinical research coordinator, 300 hours. Acetaminophen, ICU delirium. Clinical research coordinator, 300 hours. EEG multimodal anesthesia, ICU delirium. Crochet, 150 hours. $500, nonprofit donations. Bone marrow volunteer, 50 hours, 300 people recruited. Vice president, community outreach, 144 hours, 200 feminine hygiene products distributed. Biophysical protein kinematics research, 1,800 hours, three abstracts, three posters. Church youth group leader started a community fridge receiving 10,000 pounds of food a year. All right, we scanned it quickly, just like an ad comp would, and what do you remember most? In my head, I bucket similar things. All that clinical research work goes here. That's nearly 3,000 hours invested in managing patient databases and abstract submissions, coordinating between patients, your PI, and your lab. To me, that work stands out immediately. Second is Sam's community work, bone marrow advocate, community outreach for feminine hygiene products, and bam, that church youth group leader activity. 3,000 hours where she supported 200 kids over 80 years. And then of course that huge impact by starting the community fridge that delivers tens of thousands of pounds of food annually. And truthfully, outside of that, I don't know if you felt the same way, but I ignore or forget the rest. For every application, there is one, maybe two highlights. And it plays to your advantage to make that painfully clear. And that brings us to secret number three, the echo chamber. No adcom will remember your entire application. Well, you might not remember it a month after you submit it, but they will remember one or two things. And it's your responsibility to ensure that you pick and choose what you want to be remembered for. You can't just let it happen. You have to intentionally design how you feature your highlights. For example, this is Sam Secondary. And you can see very intentionally, every piece is about community programming. This talks about how her family relied on community programs to survive. And that is why she volunteers at the women's shelter. And this piece talks about the community fridge and how real people like Lana, her son, and Tim 
can get through another day with food in their bellies. This creates a deafening echo chamber where the entire application screams community, community, in community. Now, if there's one thing we can be certain of, seven interviews, five medical school acceptances, and now a matriculation to a top medical school in the country, that's not an accident. It's intentional, it's engineered, it's designed. And who knows, maybe you watching right now can take the same blueprint and get into your dream medical school. If you like this video, you'll love this one here where I talk about the 10 brutal truths I wish I knew when I started my pre-med journey. Thank you, goodbye.